Hello and welcome to this next video tutorial in how to use QLC Plus with me your host PJC. Today we're going to continue to look at the functions tab. So under functions, so far we've covered scenes and chases in the previous video. Um, today we're going to be looking at um, sequences, effects, collections and RGB matrices. So let's start with the simplest of these four which is collections. So if I click here and create a new collection, I can call it, say, um, let's call it different bars, different bars, underscore one So a collection is basically a group of scenes or functions all combined together. So into this, I can press the plus button and add these different scenes. So let's say pick one, three, and five. So if I then have that collection activated, I will have um, bars 1, 3 and 5 turned on. Nice and simple. Um, now let's get into something a bit more complicated. Let's look at chasers. So now let's look at sequences. Sequences are similar to chasers as in they have different steps where you step through. However, they are different but the fact that they only can run within inside the scene. So if I, for example, select bars all, and then create a new sequence, let's call this uh, run underscore o one. So chasers, we added a the individual bars in, into the chaser. For sequences, we can add the different steps into it. So if I tab into the all fixtures view, so I can see them all at the same time, and let's say put number one on. Then add a step, then number two on, add a step, number three on, add a step, number four on, add a step, number five on, add a step, and finally number six on, and add that step. Now, if I bring up the fixture monitor and just pin that to the left there and play through it, you can see it flicks through those. So if we again slow it down, so it takes one second to hold between each one. It will run between, uh, and start it from the beginning, and it always helps. It will play through each of those different ones. That first one is currently being held on because that's the step that it's on top of at the moment. So I can then step backwards and forwards through those and just play those. I can step back along it, forward along it, using the buttons up there. I can also stop the playback or the playback again. We also have copy, cut and paste functions up here. So if I selected the first six steps and copied them, I could then paste them. So I could it would then play through all of these twice. Then like uh, like chaser, sorry, we have all the different functions such as loop, ping pong, single shots, going forwards, backwards, and then fade in, fade out and step durations. Again the same as chasers. So you might be thinking, why do you want chasers rather than sequences? Well, that comes down more when you're working with shows and doing more complex stuff like this, like that. Or in this example, it's changed it from having to have six individual scenes plus a chaser to one scene and a sequence. It depends on your particular needs for that in the place. For more information on it, please look at the QLC Plus manual as it has a great section on the differences between sequences and chasers. So that's sequences and collections covered. Um, let's look at effects. Effects are designed for moving lights. So in our environment, we have um, two moving lights. So I'm going to select those two. So we've got you. Click on that and it imports those two lights. So we've got a couple of different things here. So we've got the name of it, uh, name of the different lights. We've got the direction, so we can reverse the direction of it. Right, so you want one light going forwards while the other one light goes backwards. You can offset it by so many degrees. So if you're changing the pan, you can offset it by, say, 180 degrees, depending on what your light will allow. And then you've got a general intensity which you can change. So if we go into the movement, you can see here that both of the lights are going round there and creating a circle movement. Across here we have a pan, I think it is, and then T 
tilts in the other direction. So that won't actually be drawing a circle in the venue, but it will actually be moving them through, it moves through the pan and tilt axes with those different figures. So if I do a test run on it, you can see that the lights there are going through the pan and tilt at the same time. The two indicators on the left, bottom and the right show where that particular light is moving, whether it's in pan or in tilt. So if I stop that test one. So here it's just doing a circle. I can change the pattern to say something like a figure of eight, and then it will pass through coordinates of a figure of eight, or a line, or whatever your situation requires. So if I just put it back to a circle again, and I was discussing earlier, you can change an offset. So if I just put in an offset, and then click a few times to make sure it actually registers it. So now, instead of both lights being in the same position, they are now offset by 180 degrees on their arc. This applies for whatever pattern it is, so they'll start in the completely opposite positions, but they're still going the same direction. So they're going that way around. So that's got a into a circle. So that's going clockwise around. But if I say reverse that direction, now light one is going clockwise, and then the second one is going anti-clockwise. These numbers one and two are defined by the step. So you can move those around. So one will be at the top and then two will be at the bottom. And then again, if I test it, you can see that those numbers, are, the lights are changing differently. Again, similar to chasers and sequences, we have directions. So we can change it between forwards, going backwards, like doing an infinite loop, doing the motion once, or going back and forth along the motion. We then have loads of different shapes you can draw with the lights as it goes through its different coordinates. So I'm just going to put it on light, uh, no, let's do figure eight. So I'm just going to put it on figure of eight so we can see what the different parameters do. So the width alters the width of uh, the shape it is. So on this figure of eight, for example, I'm decreasing the width of it so it's not going out so far. Then obviously the height alters the height of it. The X and Y offset alter the central position. So if I increase this, it will move along the X axis. If I decrease it, say 100, it will move it less down on the X axis. And again, the same for Y axis. So 150, moving it high will move it down. Whereas moving it lower, we'll move it further up. We then also have rotation. So I can rotate it by, say, 50 degrees, and then it will move in that sort of arc. And again, rotation offsets, I can rotate it, and then the lights will be rotated round. More complicated patterns, like the Lisa Jews, or however you want to pronounce that, um, you've got things like frequency and phase. So frequency increases the amount of times that it goes through that cycle and you can just play around with that until you get your desired results. If you want lots of complicated patterns you can increase the frequency or decrease it. Phase is how much we are out of a line of each other per uh, cycle it goes through and then again that goes through both the X and Y axis, which can create some really interesting, bizarre, quickly moving patterns. Um, finally, going to have a look at RGB matrices. So if we create a new RGC matrix, we can't do anything with it because we need to create a group. This is something I didn't cover in the early tutorials, but now I'm looking at the matrices, I'm going to look at it. So if here we've got the fixture groups, and this is just all the lights we have in the first universe. What we can do is create individual groups within this. So I can select bars 1 through 6, right click, add the fixtures to a group. Let's call this group bars. And then create an initial state. I'm going to create it a width of 6 and a height of 1.
So now if we look at the bars, it has each bar going across sideways like that. So we can create as many groups for each set of lights as we want. So I'm selecting the bars again and let's create this called bars 2 by 3. So let's create it or 3 by 2 are. 3 by 2. So let's create it 3 wide and 2 high. So now if we look at that group, the bars are in that, that form of grid. I'm going to move them around so they're in more correct positions. So one be there, two be there, three be there, four, five and six. So we've got odds along the bottom and then evens along the top. So now if we go into functions, we can now add these two groups we've just created. So here we've got the bars or bars group. So that's all of them in a line or the bars three by two. So that will create a grid like that. So we can say do fill columns. And that will fill from left to right. Uh, let's just make this white so it represents what we're doing in our situation more correctly. So if I go into the monitor and do a test run, you can see that it lights up those in pairs. Or I can change it to single bars and it will light them up one at a time. This is really useful. So rather than creating either sets of six scenes and a chaser, or creating a scene and a sequence inside it. I can now just create a single RGB matrix and then change it to full columns and it will run through all the different lights which gives me exactly the same pattern as I was getting bought before. Uh, again we've got the run orders and directions either forwards, backwards, single shot, ping pong exactly the same as in chasers and in sequences. But it also gives me the flexibility that I can quickly and easily create different sorts of patterns with it. Rather than how to reprogram all of those individually, I can just select one of the pre-programmed patterns. However, this means that I then have less control over it, so I can only use these predefined patterns. Whereas the other options, both the sequences and the chasers, give me flexibility to create it in any particular pattern that I like. So that was me quickly looking at sequences, effects, collections and RGB matrices. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, please subscribe to see the videos as soon as they become available. Give us a like just to show that you appreciate the videos. Please leave any comments below in about if you have any problems with this or if what else you want me to cover in this tutorial series. Again, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.